So in part one of this video, I contemplated the notion of the overrepresentation of security related aspects to shit hits the fan and possibly the overzealousness of some when it comes to the militaristic aspects of prepping. Now in this video, I'm going to discuss the two general classes of skills and institutions that are required for a community to function. Security is but one factor of one class. So let's get to it. Now what are hard skills? So hard skills are the essential required skills needed to run a society. They include learned skills and training related to a society's human resources. Hard skills are considered tangible skills because they're easily identified and measurable. So this could be anything from engineering to plumbing to computer science to communications, military applications. Typically, this is all people think about when they talk about prepping for collapse. You know, the bug out bags, the get out of dodge plans, all the gear and stuff like that. And rightly so, as without them, we surely would revert to the most primitive manner of man. But as I said in the first video, you can have 10 great soldiers who don't get along with each other, and then it's all for naught. You need some social glue, some social unifier to bond those people in order to get them to work together and that is primarily the function of social institutions and the human services. Things that aren't covered under the hard skills category. Now although these hard skills are absolutely essential, they're not sufficient by themselves. And in fact I would argue that they're not even primary to soft skills, yet only equal in value to these soft skills. I mean think about the idea of people taking firearms training to protect their families. Think about that statement. What comes first, their families or their firearms? Without that initial bond there would be nothing to protect. No loyalty to one's family, tribe, clan or community, as that's a soft skill. So without it, technical skills are as much a problem as they are beneficial. So it's that bond, it's that love of your family and your community that precedes your desire to protect it with your hard skills. Just like the yin and yang that complete the circle of life, both of these hard and soft skills are equally valid when we're talking about how to survive any sort of disaster or life-threatening situation. Now let's quickly go over the hard skills. So of course, we'll get security out of the way first. So that could be martial arts, that could be firearms training, it could be uh, taking it up a level and talking about strategizing and logistics, it could be defense and offense from a national military perspective, or it could be local law enforcement. Getting away from law enforcement, what would be needed next in disaster? Well, we would need first responders who aren't security oriented, like medical personnel, paramedics, firemen and women. Other types of hard skills would be agriculture and all the science and knowledge and wisdom that goes into that, into animal husbandry, hunting, angling, gathering of resources. Also you would need intelligence gathering and dissemination. Arguably this is one of the most significant factors in the modern day is our ability to communicate about what's going on in the world to one another. So communications is going to play a massive role here. Surveillance, record keeping, research, telecommunications possibly. These are going to be cornerstones of rebuilding a strong, thriving society. Of course, you're going to need your people in the skilled trades. You can focus on construction and architecture, uh, maintenance and repairs of the main infrastructure, engineering. We're going to need people who know how to generate electricity people who know how to produce energy, climate control, so heating and cooling systems, waterworks. These are all going to be essential things that are going to be needed in order to bring a community to a high level of functioning. There are also the hard skills and the more primitive crafts like bushcraft, survival skills, fire starting, stuff like that. Those are hard skills only in a more primitive sense. There's also things like knowledge of mining, forestry, resource extraction, resource acquisition, so scavenging, urban mining, if you want to call it that. There's also the factor of technological development and research, manufacturing. A lot of preppers are technologically stagnated in that 
we're trying to achieve the highest point of technology now, should the grid ever collapse, we would have at least been the state of the art when the grid was up. But few of us have the means to partake in any sort of research to actually push technology forward. Now, there are a lot of creative preppers out there, don't get me wrong, but it's just having the infrastructure and the means to do that would be very challenging after a disaster, especially a global disaster, which is why most global disasters which are enduring are commonly depicted as being technologically regressive as opposed to progressive. Of course, you're going to need a lot of unskilled labor, which would definitely be a, a hard skill of sorts. You're going to need some systems of transport. You're going to need waste management, you know, as I've talked about plumbing, waterworks, sewage, garbage disposal, some sort of standards that people can agree on in order to live, to maintain some level of cleanliness so that some disease doesn't break out and, and just add to the disaster. So those are the general hard skills and technical foundations of modern civilization. But there's also these things called social institutions, which are kind of what bonds all of the aforementioned and they center around the human services. So because we're not robots, we as human beings have emotions. We're organic beings, we live, we die. So we have needs, we need different things that machines don't need. And that's where soft skills fulfill the niche. So soft skills is a term often associated with a person's emotional intelligence. Now this isn't the case of occupational psychology, but I'm taking this hard soft skill dichotomy and applying it to preparedness. So it's the cluster of personality traits, social graces, communication, language, personal habits, interpersonal skills, uh, leadership abilities that characterize various relationships with other people. Now soft skills contrasted to hard skills, which are generally easy and quantifiable to measure, are quite qualitative in that they're not easy to measure. So in terms of society then, they can be seen as established sets of norms and subsystems that support each society's survival. So they're that which kind of mitigates the transactions between people. Now one of the core soft skills required for any thriving society is some sort of level of medical or first aid or EMS. And I know I talked about paramedics as being a hard skill, and to some extent it is. But the actual act of caring for other human beings and treating other human beings, I would say is a soft skill because it's restorative. Remember, soft skills are yielding. Things such as psychology and mental health care are going to come in here. Not only on the interpersonal level, but also, of course, on the broader community level where you're actually delivering those kind of services to people who need it. Because especially in a post-disaster situation, you're going to have a lot of people who've been traumatized. And the only way they're going to achieve a adequate level of functioning is if they can get some kind of counseling in order to continue on in this world. Erecting a society such as this would be very complicated, as typically mental health is the last priority of any government. You're also going to need an administrative aspect to keep track and keep records of all the different interactions, you know, the licenses. This is where government comes in. And I know a lot of libertarians may scoff at the idea of this administrative skill, but there is a need to have some level of regulation within a society in order for it to achieve a level of thriving in technological evolution. Because the only way people can work together is if there are some universal accepted standards, universal language that we can all communicate with. And that's where government regulation comes in. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't agree with all government regulation. I'm just saying that there needs to be a certain amount of that, a certain balance of it, if you will, in order for us to move forward as a species. So another soft skill area is going to be within education. You know, it could be homeschooling, could be general education, or it could be specialized. Education is going to be absolutely fundamental in order to bring forth the next generation in a way that is an improvement over the last. Otherwise, once again, we're going to have a social regression 
after global disaster. Another thing to consider is the importance of art and entertainment. Now, human beings uh, have always been culturally sophisticated creatures. There's a part of us, for whatever reason, which requires to let loose. And we all have that longing for some sort of aesthetic gratification. So music, sports, games, some form of leisure and recreation is going to be required in order to make life bearable, especially if some large-scale calamity were to befall us all. You're also going to need some agency to coordinate the charity and the polity because there's going to be a lot of people who are going without. And the best way to discourage crime is to teach people, of course, for one, to provide education, but also to have some element of assistance for people who, and I'm not just talking assistance for able-bodied young males, I'm talking about people with disabilities, seniors, people with mental health problems. These are going to be people who have family members who are going to want support for them. So a lot of people, although they might just take a social Darwinist perspective of, well, you know, survival of the fittest, it's probably going to boil down to being somebody in your family or somebody you know, and of course, that's going to make it personal to you. And once it gets there, you're going to realize that, hey, this is actually something that we, a society, need. Hopefully, you're able to have some compassion before that and recognize the importance of it. But, you know, for a lot of people, it's going to have to hit home first. Another thing which is questionable because it's used for negative purposes throughout history is religion and spirituality. Now, to each his own in terms of what spirituality they choose. As many people know on this channel, uh, it doesn't matter what faith you practice or if you don't practice faith, you are welcome to engage in dialogue on my channel. I will approach you like any other human being I would approach. Even the most atheistic person would have to concede that there probably will be some kind of role of spirituality or religion in a post-disaster environment. They may not like it, of course, uh, but you know that's just the fact. It's going to be there and people are going to want to have meaning for what's happened to them in their lives and they're going to use spirituality, some form of it, towards that end. And unfortunately, when you have people who want big answers like that, there's exploitation. So I do foresee the risk of this soft skill being exploited in a grid down scenario because people are going to want answers and they're probably going to be highly susceptible and vulnerable to those very charismatic and fundamentalist personality types. You're also going to need some form of rehabilitation, not only physical rehabilitation for those uh, in the medical end of things, but also in corrections. So you're going to need uh, a, a legal system to some extent, unless you're just going to revert to full-on capital punishment for any minor offense. You're going to need some either restorative system or a system which is punitive, which you're looking at jails and a justice system and laws, constitutional laws perhaps. And of course with that comes politics and diplomacy. And in addition to this, the, the whole unifying factor here would be economics, trade and barter, currency regulation and markets. The economy is how we communicate with material goods. I believe it's a soft skill. I don't think that it's something which is, you know, typically practiced by preppers. I think sometimes we talk about barter and trade and whatnot. But I don't think many of us are thinking about it outside the scope of a small-scale interaction between one human being and another. Uh, there will be local currencies that arise again, or local forms of borrowing, or local tokens of value which begin to surface. This is something which is going to take place. I don't view it as a hard skill because I think it's more oriented towards helping people work together as opposed to just a technical thing. Now, the economy itself is very technical and systematic, but I still do believe that it's more ado with facilitating human, to, human interactions than it is to just generating materials per se. So th that is the dichotomy between hard and soft skills. So there's a lot more to emergency preparedness, especially on the soft skill spectrum, 
especially with regards to politics and social psychology. Because like I said at the beginning of this video, if you have 10 soldiers and they can't get along for whatever reason, that's going to be highly problematic. It would almost be advisable if you did have a small group of people to make an agreed upon charter of rights before, like right from the get-go, have some kind of code or some kind of law. It could be derivative of the current rule of law or just something that you can agree on and have everybody sign it or something to that effect to facilitate that cohesion that you're going to need. Otherwise, it could very well be a dog-eat-dog -dog situation. When people are scared, it doesn't matter what their technical skill sets are. They may well do irrational things. So I hope this talk has been useful to you. Please like, comment, and share if you enjoy this video. I look forward to making more of these videos, and you can cast your vote for me making these types of videos by liking, commenting, and sharing them. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next installment of After the Collapse which is going to be called Things Fall Apart and that's going to be a very special installment of the series so I hope that lots of people return for that one. Thank you for watching Canadian Prepper Out.